The issue with external foreign fighters is that they tend to have citizenship which allows them to travel freely in the West. And so they're, um, they're not easy to find, they're not easy to uh, identify, they're not easy to counter. The second thing is that these are people who operate in democratic open societies. And you know, when people operate, particularly within the context of religious institution or university, um, most of our countries are reluctant to get involved. Uh, in any kind of policing activity until there's a significant threat. By that time, it's often too late. And then finally, you know, these are covert organizations, and in a free state, you know, the ability to conduct that kind of internal policing is, is limited, uh, and we like it to be limited. So, so we are at a disadvantage to this problem. Well, when you look at Western foreign fighters, uh, one study found that about 62% of them were driven by a search for identity. And so the countering for that is um, to try to, um, to establish a positive identity within the existing Western state. So that requires uh, making them from aliens into stakeholders. And there's a number of ways in which that can be done, a number of implications. The second thing is a large number of these people, for them to move up the ladder of radicalization, usually requires an indoctrinator, some sort of a mentor. Um, those, that's usually done over the internet. That is usually amenable to uh, interdiction, monitoring, or identification through modern communications uh, interception techniques that is available to most countries in the West. That's a good question. I, I personally think that the, the major driver of assimilation is language. And uh, I think that if there are instances in which um, uh, policies that enhance the use of the dominant language in a country are particularly important. The second is there are certain values in these countries that um, you know, need to be acknowledged as universal. And there's some practices which uh, uh, have brought in from other countries um, you know, an example not related to this, but like, for example, female genital mutilation. Uh, it should be made apparent, you know, as part of the arrival for refugees or immigrants that, you know, there's certain cultural practices which are not acceptable in here. And, and honestly, you know, tolerance of them or something like that should be considered not compatible with citizenship or residency in these countries. Rehabilit the rehabilitative function of prison has largely been abandoned in favor of the retributive function of prison. And uh, really what needs to happen is prisoners have to develop a sense of being part of their community, not being cast off from the community or ostracized from the community. So what I think that requires is a more closely supervised release and probably less long-term incarceration for most people who commit crimes. And that closely supervised release needs to have the option of instant reincarceration for a short period uh, in, in the event of a transgression or even a likely transgression. I think that would be much more cost effective and I think it would also help people become reintegrated in their society. To a certain extent we've given up on that. That's why you see three strikes and you're outlaw. Um, I mean the idea of incarcerating somebody for their lifetime based on a metaphor drawn from the game of baseball. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's ridiculous.